you know, it's, it, it's interesting. Um, when somebody, when I was challenged to define innovation, I, and I've been often challenged to define lots of terms like evaluation and program logic and this, that, and the other. And, and sometimes I think it's, it's worth doing that, but sometimes I think these things are a mixture. And certainly, I wouldn't claim that what I was talking about today for innovation is entirely different than what you would do in a more traditional evaluation using a more program logic approach. There are overlaps. Anybody who does evaluation without looking at feedback loops shouldn't be doing evaluation. So I mean, there are, that I think these things are a part of each other. So while in, in this instance, um, the HERO program wasn't an necessarily an innovation and that kind of evaluation approach. There were certainly overlaps in what was done for that and what I would recommend doing for. My first reaction to that is start with the end in mind. So you've got the money to do the program, so you're going to have to get objectives um, and then you're going to know what you're going to need to measure. Um, so you can start building that in at the beginning, um, which shouldn't, should just be part of the normal process and shouldn't actually add any much cost to the program at all. Um, and make sure then that along the way you have the ability to collect the data as you're going, um, because you know where you're going, because you're starting with the end in mind. Um, and then, um, then at the end it's not going to be such a big process um, to be able to say, well, well, did we get to where we wanted to go? Um, and, you know, as I said you know, to, to you before, David and I chatted about, um, you know, about budget uh, and, you know, you do the best with what you've got um, and just make sure that if there's any limitations, you declare those uh, and you'll probably find that it'll still be really useful. Um, some of it will be um, facts and figures, um, you know, how many are doing this how, at the moment. Um, it'll be baseline data around that. Um, otherwise, it might be a survey... Um, uh, which is about awareness, for example, which is something perhaps we didn't have for this, for our evaluation, we didn't have a survey where we went out and measured what's people's awareness of, of having a health check now. Um, uh, so um, that, that might have involved a, a survey um, or it could have involved a telephone interview process. So it, that will all vary depending on what it is that you, you think you need to collect. Um, but, um, you know, and also then budget will drive how, the, how you collect it as well. Go back to, to Mark's three questions. How, how will I measure how much do we do? How will I measure how well do we do it? How will I measure is anyone better off? If you haven't got a lot of resources, those are three good questions to go with. Mark talks about the, the simplest um, consumer survey in the world. Did we treat you well? Did we help you with your issue? You can virtually ask that of anybody without a lot of resources. It, it's a very simple starting point, but it's actually a very powerful starting point. And sometimes it's better to get in with something that's really simple and, and is achievable and then build from there. Just add one thing to that. I absolutely agree with that. Um, that sometimes it, especially if you don't have a lot of resources, telling a couple of clients' journeys can do more mm. than collecting lots of data and presenting that. I mean, I have found over many, many years of also being an advocate and lobbyist um, that you can change people's minds with a really compelling story. And it doesn't, again, it doesn't take a lot. You only have to talk maybe to a few clients. But then people get an idea of what that journey really was from here to maybe self-sufficiency there, whatever. And if you've got the both, then yeah. you've got something yeah. very powerful, yeah. And I guess just a bit of a, a secret, you know, in terms of um, doing interviews or telling people's stories, you don't need to talk to a lot of people before you start to hear the same story over and over again. There, so if someone comes in and tells you they've got to do, you know, 30 interviews, Maybe I don't need to do that. Maybe you only need to do five and you'll start to hear the same things over and over again. Mm. But, so that, that, that's just a good way. You can be very efficient. I've got a question <laughs> of the group, if anyone would like to answer it. Um, this morning I was really interested to hear that Margaret Allison said that evaluation in Queensland is an emerging competency. 
I don't, did anyone remember hearing that? And that, that's just intrigued me all day. I thought it was, it was really interesting that she had the insight to see that. But, but I wonder, do you agree with that? Do you agree that the social services sector, um, that evaluation is an emerging, emerging, con, um, emer, emerging competency? <laughs> um, and so I was interested if anyone had anything to say about that. I think it's probably from what we've heard, and certainly from talking with people in government, in the nonprofit sector, in the private sector, is that all sectors need to build their competency hmm. in, eva in evaluating, however you want to define it, but being able to talk about the results of what you've invested in. We're not very good at that yet. Hmm. And I think there does need to be a lot of capacity building. I would certainly say, for whatever it's worth, that government should see the value of investing hmm. in that capacity building, because it will help them do what they want to do as well as helping all of you do what they're asking of you. Yeah. Um, and whether that's going to happen or not, I don't know. But there does need to be mm. capacity development. In, in relation to that, I, I'd like to say I love your, your concept of the embedded evaluator mm -hmm. journeying with the organisation. Because there can be a bit of a danger that evaluation becomes seen as some sort of mysterious religion. That is, yes. you know, you're the, the, <laughs> the <laughs> priests and priestesses of the religion. And most you know, people are afraid of you. Of yeah, <laughs> that's right, and 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 it can be obscure to people. Mm. And and I like that idea of the evaluator, embedded, journey along. These things are tools; they're not religions. And I think that that's really important. And they're not tests. Yeah, that's they're right. Not yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. They're yeah. not. And that's probably one of the biggest hurdles, is getting over thinking of evaluation as um, the way somebody's going to point a finger at, you know, nye, 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 you didn't, you didn't, you didn't quite get there, no, no, no. That's not what it should be about. And we all need to take responsibility for that. So I think one of the things that's going to be really tricky is as we begin to move into this outcomes investment culture, where Queensland is going to be buying outcomes, we need to be very careful that we don't couple that stuff so tightly mm. that the service deliverers get absolutely bludgeoned to death if they don't meet whatever the outcome agreement was at the beginning. Things change. There needs to be a balance. Mm. Finding that balance, I think, is going to be really, really hard, but needs to happen. I agree. I think that that the culture has to be one of we are in this together and we are looking for ways in which we improve rather than a, a sort of punitive culture that is if you don't meet this yep. bar. And, and a really good example of where that's not working well is NAPLAN, mm -hmm. where, where something which could be a great tool for improvement becomes seen mm -hmm. falsely in too many schools as you know, oh my goodness, if we don't meet the bar, we'll be punished. And then you get all sorts of perverse results. It's very important Absolutely. that the culture that is created be one of, of working together and journeying together and discovering together, not sort of jumping all over you if you don't meet this <laughs> level. Awesome. And related to that, I'd like to say that uh, when we're talking about surveys and when we're talking about... Um, getting feedback from clients. My observation is that, that if what we are asking clients is not meaningful to their lives, or participants is not meaningful to their lives, and if what we are asking is not meaningful to the uh, providers on the ground at the interface who are doing that, then don't expect to get really good data. It's why it's really right. important that everybody be part of the conversation and it be seen as moving together. Like the organisational way for the Queensland Aboriginal Health Council has been pretty much out in a, on a journey for the last two to three years of implementing like an embedded process in what we call continued quality improvement. And really what we're looking at is trying to develop systems that are across the state in place that can help map uh, where health and healthcare is at, and to improve the, the processes across the sector. And, uh, like, you know, whether it's termed as evaluation or uh, yeah. e 
continue quality improvement, I think that's just a matter of terminology, but really what we're looking at is trying to develop a, a system that where we are evaluating our own mechanisms in order for, for improvement. I think that motivation from the providers particularly is really important. Mm. If you're collecting data for that reason, you're collecting it for the right reason. Mm. It's not simply about trying to prove to a third party that you're doing a great job, but it's how can we do yeah. better? Yeah. So it, that's sort of been established out of uh, the organisation realising that we need to develop this internally and, and it's a part of who we are and what we do now. And I'm thinking about for other organisations um, who may not have that capacity internally, think about who you can partner with. QCOS is it's probably a, a key organisation that you can turn to in order to look at what organisations are available that are doing these types of continual quality improvement and have you know dedicated staff and then to look at data and different things and how you can partner with them to, because at the end of the day, if working together means uh, looking at similar outcomes, then it could be quite likely that you could uh, work together on uh, strengthening the, the data that you need for your own program. Let's give one sort of last example. Um, when I was working in Singapore, for those of you, I, I don't know how many of you know much about Singapore, but it's a culture where failure is simply not acceptable um, for individuals or organizations or governments or anybody else. I mean, you simply do not admit that you fail. So the juvenile justice department got together with me and said, we actually want to know if our programs are working. They had a suite of something like 35 programs they offered to what they called junior crims. Um, and oh, I know, not a, not a terrible, but they meant it in the most affectionate way, believe me. Um, but they had never evaluated any of them. They had no idea whether any of them made any difference at all. Um, and when we first started the process, they were really scared because they said, what if you find out that this program didn't really do anything? We're going to get in trouble. That's going to be awful. But over time, we did it very, we kept it all internal at first. The evaluation stuff wasn't shared with anybody outside of that department, didn't go anywhere else in government. So it was very safe and very secure. And little by little by little, they began to see it as a way of improving. At first it was scary, because they thought it was, they were going to get in trouble. But then they began to realize that it did give them an idea of how to make something better. And the first question I often asked them, which was fascinating, was, what's the problem you're trying to solve by having this program? And the first time I asked it, we were talking about a sexual health program for juvenile offenders. They couldn't answer it. They said, well, I don't know, we just do it. Because we have to do something around sex, don't we? I mean, these are young kids, these are adolescents. And I said, well, I don't know if you do. But what's, let's identify the problem you're trying to solve first, and then let's work our way through it, and then let's see if you're really making any difference. I won't bore you with the details. The outcomes were fabulously interesting, very interesting in a multicultural society, um, as Singapore is. And they had to come face to face with some things they never had any idea were going on. And it was a real learning experience. But it took building it little by little by little, assuring them of confidentiality for as long as they needed it before they would ever then report it to their minister or to they, what they have done over time. I've worked with them for about 10 years. Over time, they now have a system-wide evaluation program and they look at everything, and they build it into their planning so that they're always improving. It's all about improvement. Um, so it worked, but it, it did take a long time, and it took a lot of <laughs> trust building, um, because it started in a culture where you can't fail. And I think that Australia's not like that. Australia, you, you, you can fail. I mean, nobody likes to fail, but you can. Um, so it isn't quite the same, but there's still that fear that we have to get over that evaluation is about proving that you've succeeded rather than failed. And if you failed, it's going to be disastrous. Somehow we do have to change that culture. And that's going to be one of the hardest things. I, I, I think that's absolutely spot mm -hmm. on, that, that always when evaluation is mentioned, there is that sort of sense of fear mm -hmm. and, and, and perhaps a sense of threat. But I, I've said in other contexts, our, our sector really should welcome evaluation because we all got into it to make a difference. Like, you know, I doubt whether there's anybody here in this room that's in it for the money. <laughs> <laughs> or 
Although some of the rhetoric that's coming out around social entrepreneur things now makes me wonder, but that's another matter. But, you know, we got into it to make a difference. So we should want to know that we're making a difference. Because if we're not, then that really goes to the heart of why we're in this sector in the first place. And so that's why I think that you know, we should be welcoming evaluation because we, we do want to know if we're making a difference. That's why we're here.